And so you all are all in a very, in it, you all are in store for a very, very special evening. Um, now, if you're a longtime supporter of Girl Be Heard, you might be looking at the calendar and thinking, unplugged in March? Because typically the showcase is our mid-year showcase, and so you would see it staged sometime mid-January. Um, because this year has been a year unlike any other, we have started the, the school year with a steady pace and in a measured way to make sure that we're doing our due diligence to start our, our, our sessions in a positive and successful way. So here we are with spring and bloom and spring is not the only thing blooming. What you're going to see tonight is a beautiful demonstration of the blooming of talent, uniqueness, artistry, activist voices, and radical joy. And there is so much power in that. Girl Be Heard has the honor of partnering with eight middle and high schools throughout the city. And tonight, six of them will be featured. The school partnerships branch of the educational programming is led by our school partnerships program manager, Marissa Ontiveros. Now, before I bring her on to the virtual stage, I have some things I wanna share with you about this dynamic program manager. I feel tremendously honored to have her as a part of the team. And it is truly an honor for me to be her colleague. She started at Girl Be Heard eight months ago and brought with her a wealth of experience as a multidisciplinary artist and as a, as a successful and experienced arts educator. But her resume well articulated that, so I knew, it was, I, knew it was, I knew what I was going to be expecting with that. Beyond that, however, Marissa has brought a poise, a passion, a perseverance, and a precision to her role that we have all benefited from. She leads a dynamic team of eight bomb.com TAs that she's going to talk to you about later and does so with so much attention, care, and compassion. And much of what you see this evening can be attributed to the commitment and the diligence that she has seen in this process of putting this performance on. And so I'm so, so excited. She gave me a, a pep talk before we even got on the stage, and I appreciate her for that. But above all, she's made me a dog aunt. So hype her up in the chat and help me welcome to the virtual stage, Marissa. Hello. Thank you, Nella, for that warm introduction. And can we get some love in the chat for Director of Programming? DOP is in the house. Not many of you know, but I am new to this role, but the stars have aligned that I have had the joy of working with Nella in two jobs so far since 2019. And I continuously am inspired by your leadership and your work ethic, everything you do with love. So I am delighted to share the space with you tonight. And while I wish we could all be safely in the same room together, let's build some community in this virtual space and hear from you, our audience. Can I get some love in the chat for tonight's after school performers from six middle schools and high schools across three boroughs of New York City? Let us know you're there with an emoji, a chat, a word, or a phrase of how you're feeling. In tonight's performance, you are going to see six multidisciplinary pieces from our after school cohorts centering identity, leadership, and most of all, radical joy. You will hear from young people who can share who they are, what they are about, the change that they wanna see in the world without shame, without fear, without apprehension. And I wanna hold space for the immense gratitude that I have for folks who have made tonight possible. I gotta start off by thanking our entire teaching artist community, many of our TAs who are in their first year here at Girl Be Heard. The eight teaching artists that have made tonight's performance possible have gone above and beyond to make sure sessions are participant led, are supporting social emotional learning and are bringing their own art and activism into the classroom. I also wanna give a shout out to Megan Woods and the Susan McKinney and Girls Prep cohorts who we look forward to hearing at our end of the year show. Awesome. Now, do you want to tell us more about Unplugged on Location? 
Yeah, so I, I wanted to give you all a little bit of context to the, 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 the scene you're about to see. So unplugged on location is a concept that we didn't anticipate we would pursue. When we planned um, our year at the start of the year, we had hoped to do unplugged live because historically unplugged is performed live at a theater, theatrical venue in New York City where we convene all of our sites, both after school and community programs, and in sequence, they run their show one by one. This year, however, when we were making a decision about how it is we would honor the tradition of Unplugged, Omicron hit. And it really kind of made the possibility of convening all together pretty bleak. So to not completely lose that element of life performance, we decided to go to each site, hold a performance space, and film those performances so that we could put them all together and stream them live virtually for you this evening. And so over the span of two weeks that required all hands to be on deck and from across the team, everyone contributed to making this happen this evening. So I would be completely remiss if I did not acknowledge the entire Girl Be Her team because it took all of us. Uh, I wanna start with our executive director, Chi Caetano who shows tremendous trust in all of us and supports the work that we do and is always setting her sights, our sights on being the best girl we heard we can possibly be. I wanna give a huge shout out to the operations team, Kristen and Marianne, who's here this evening. Hey, Marianne. Um, They're always there making sure that we are moving in decency and order. When things get to moving and moving fast, we've gotta have the folks in the house, letting us know to keep things in order. And Kristen and Marianne have done that. So thank you both. I also want to acknowledge our communications team, Shahira, Olivia, and Amy, who even as I speak are holding us down in the background right now. We could not have done this show without you all. So I want to thank you. To the development team, who's always taking inventory of what we're doing um, and knowing exactly how to articulate our work so it can, we can expand opportunities for Girl Be Heard. Karen and Alice, we thank you. And last but certainly not least, hats off to the best programs team in the land, period. You all are tried and true, and I, I love working, doing this work with you all. So to that end, I, I have to shout out Amalia, who is the other half of education, um, artistic leads, Angelica, Sukari, and Imani, and not to be forgotten, the special projects team with Melissa and Nell. And this year we've had the wonderful pleasure of having with us Elena and Kaini, who are our feminist in residence. They're interns this year, and they they've they've been doing it and and so we're so lucky that we have this tremendous team that works together so well to to put on to, to continue the work of girl we heard um and i already mentioned it in the chat but i also want to acknowledge our board members who are here and thank them for their tremendous support throughout the year um we certainly want to give acknowledgement to our funders thank you for supporting our work such that we have an opportunity to work with young people across new york city and a special note of acknowledgement to our council members who are really tireless advocates of arts programming in schools. Art is transformative. And without the support that we get from them, it we might not be able to have the opportunity to work with them. So thank you so much to the city council members. We're gonna drop a link in the chat um, because we're about to start the program. But we wanna start the program with a special land acknowledgement and that is coming from Brooklyn Prep. So without further ado, tonight's land acknowledgement.
Today we are connected online to put on a show. We would like to acknowledge that technology and internet may not be accessible to some people. In the United States, we are aware that this land was taken away from indigenous people. And want to share a land acknowledgement. We, we commit, commit to uplifting these unheard voices. Thank you, Brooklyn Prep, for that land acknowledgement. Um, I invite you, if you've been able to click the link, to share with us um, whose land you're currently occupying in the chat. Girl Be Heard is gathered on the unceded land of the Canarsie and Muncie Lenape peoples. And I ask you to join me in acknowledging their community, their elders, both past and present, and as well as future generations. Thank you, Marsha. Feel free to drop it in the chat. And as you all are doing that, we can put up the radical slide, radical joy slide. Because our theme this year is in fact radical joy. Organization-wide, Girl Be Heard has committed to uplifting radical joy as the theme for the 2021-2022 program year. Why radical joy? Because we work with girls, young women, gender expansive youth of color. And we happen to know through both serving these groups of young people and through our own lived experiences as both women and women of color, that this was a time to be intentional about turning our faces towards the direction of joy, despite all that has been going on. And so radical joy for us simply means being intentional about seeking ways to prioritize self-love, self-care, happiness, and that's despite challenging and changing times. So again, we're gonna ask you to talk back to us. This is an evening where we get to enjoy performances, but we also wanna we also wanna engage you in conversation too. So talk back to us in the spirit of celebrating radical joy. We wanna hear what is radical joy in your words. Radical joy looks like, radical joy sounds like. Share it with us. Marissa. Yeah, we're saying about our radical joy. Yeah, I see them coming in goat yoga in the chat. Radical joy. I was saying for me, radical joy is those small moments that you can take care of yourself when times get hard. I was saying I brought um, like a beverage that brings me joy today for tonight's performance. Um, and the cohorts you will see tonight have been working together um, since some of them since November. They've been building community, exploring identity, and using their voices to be the kind of change they want to see in the world. Other groups started as late as February. February. So in just a bit, you're going to see a wide range of recorded pieces of multidisciplinary art from singing to poetry to an original short play to even a dance battle in tonight's performance coming to you from students all across New York City. We want to celebrate and honor where these unique art ensembles are in their process tonight. Our first cohort to the virtual stage is a small but mighty ensemble led by T.A. T. Bass, who has been leading the cohort through filmmaking and experimenting with art direction, in addition to creating pieces of original poetry. So let's give it up in the chat for Humanities Prep, our very first performance of the night. Hi, my name is Tay Bass, and I am a humanities prep PA. Um, our piece is called Eleutheromania, the intense and irresistible desire for freedom in two parts. Uh, we really developed this piece through our own work. We wrote poems and had a lot of really deep and powerful discussions about the changes we want to see in the world. So this is our vision and our dream for the future. It has helped me in many ways to open up more and to be more talkative and expressive. Creating the piece to talk about how we could all change at one point 
it takes time to look back and reflect on ourselves, but that's okay because we have the time to do so. So I just wanted to write that down and to let, let people know, or like maybe myself know that you could change, you just need time and effort. In this world, you meet bad people, those who steal, those who lie, those who lash out. The life choices we regret have a hold on others. Such life choices can scar others. Such life choices made by us. I was told of a place where your life choices don't have effect on your value, that it's okay to be bad, but to also remember that there's always something good behind your choices. This is a place to be atoned for, a place to be good, a place to be a selfless you. In this world, humans are hungry, yet they do not desire food. We fill our lives with vanity in hopes to fill the hole in the pit of our stomach that grows each day. But in my dreams, Holes do not exist, nor do stomachs. And there's no need to fill yourself up because you are not empty. You are not empty. Amazing. Amalia mentioned in the chat that she has chills. I am with you, Amalia. Everyone give it up for Juleni and Delmi kicking us off with a bang. Those lights and the dream sequence. Those were all original yes. concepts too. Ruminating on ideas about how through our dreams we can imagine and envision a place where we can just be. That 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 was so beautiful. And one of the things that you might have um, seen at the very start of their presentation is a special interview. So we're wanting to share with you all some of their insights of the program experience and what inspired their pieces. So those interviews may follow, um, may, may proceed rather some of the presentations that you see this evening. So now I'd like to welcome the Haran School, Be Still My Heart. Haran steals my heart every time. This is our District 75 school, um, and they just started in February. It is our only site being held virtually, but that has not stopped them from building a deep sense of community by affirming identity with statements that you'll hear today, like, yes, I am, and leadership, like, yes, I can. And I wanna encourage you to not be a spectator in this one. Join in in reciting these affirmations for yourself at home. So please welcome Haran. Everybody. I'm Marsha, Marsha Gilden. I'm one of the teaching artists at P79 Haran School. Um, and uh, we're happy to introduce ourselves to you today. We, um, the girls can't be with us, but they're with us in spirit and you're gonna hear their voices and, um, and hear some of what we've been creating together. The Haran School is in East Harlem. It's a special education high school. We have been there for eight years and Lisa and I have been working together for two years and it's always a joy. We love being there with them and for them and we wanna introduce them to you and bring them into the Girl Be Heard community. Lisi. Thank Tell you, Marsha. As she said, I am Lisi Wiedemeyer, and this is only my second year teaching at Haran. 
with this group, but it has been absolutely amazing. So far this year, we have been exploring affirmations, our sense of self, self-expression, and really what it means to come together and to listen to one another and to explore. And we have a very, very empowering and beautiful ritual that we do called our affirmations chant, which has a long history at Girl Be Heard. And the history of it came from the girls themselves. Of course, everything that we develop and all the rituals that develop come from the girls themselves and are being together. And we're gonna share with you a little bit of that in this video of the affirmations chant. Affirmations, 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 affirmations. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I see. Yes, I see. And yes, I believe. I believe. And we've been exploring that with the girls, you know, what what their expression of can, am, see, and believe are in their world and in their hearts. And the, the teacher that we're working with really um, said just today, didn't mm -hmm. she? Yeah. She just said, you know, it's getting deeper and deeper. It's really getting good. The girls are really listening and expressing themselves, and that's what we need. So we're happy to present to you P79, the Haran School, all of our fabulous girls. Affirmation, 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 affirmation. Yes, I am. Yes, yes I, I am. am. Yes, I can. Yes, yes I, I can. can. Yes, I see. Yes, yes I, I see. see. Yes, I believe. Yes, yes I believe. Affirmation, 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 affirmation. I believe people are really good at heart. Yes, yes I, I believe. believe. I believe we have a great world. Yes. yes. I believe the sun lights up the sky. Yes. I believe everyone is special in their own way. Yes. Yes. I believe. I believe. I believe the sun is out, it's a nice day outside, and it's also cold. Yes! I believe. I believe friends are like family. Yes! I believe. I believe in rainbow colors. Yes! 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 I believe. I believe in the sky. I believe in the stars. Yes. I believe. I believe in the connection we can have with our pets. I wish Charlie was here. I miss him. Yes. I believe. I believe sometimes junk food does not make your body feel good like what happened with my friend yes i believe Thank you to Haran for offering those affirmations, a reminder of the ways that we can affirm each other and create a collective vision for the future. I am continuously moved by T.A. Marsha Gilden and Lisi Wiedemeyer's grace, artistry, and care with all they do with this incredible cohort. I'm so inspired that I want to make my own I believe statements right here, right now, and use the chat to affirm as a community. If you agree with me, you can let me know by saying, yes, I believe. I'll start with a statement and in the chat, we can get a yes, I believe, and then see if anyone in the community would like to offer some more statements for us to affirm. I believe that the arts are necessary, vital now more than ever. Yes, I believe, I'm imagining, I'm hearing it. 
<laughs> Thanks, Stella. Um, I believe in dismantling systems of oppression to create a more equitable future for all. Yes, I believe. I'm, I'm calling out <laughs> the voices there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I believe the voices of youth are our future. Yes, I believe. Thank you. Feel free to add some more statements in the chat, starting with, yes, I, I believe what you believe to be true. Well, I tell you a little bit about what's up next. Carrie and the Brooklyn Prep Ensemble have such a treat in store for you that features not just one, but four distinct pieces spanning art forms such as poetry, dance, and acting. Right. And so before we bring on the, um, the presentation, I just wanted to give a quick call to my comms team. Um, I'm noticing a bit of sync issue with sound and audio. Do we need to pause for a second while we sort that out or are we good to go? Okay, I think we're good to go. Otherwise I can talk a little bit more about our, our spring programs, which are very, very exciting and are on the move. Um, okay, great. So in the spirit of community, we wanna recognize that um, we are all here with different lived experiences. And so we wanna offer a trigger warning uh, for the next two performances, which are approximately 11 minute, minutes in length um, together. Uh, the first of the, first of the features um, expresses um, some suicidal ideation and the next contains strong language and mentions of sexual assault. So please do take the time to um, take care of yourself as you need in this moment. Thank you, Nella. Um, this group has been ruminating on the antithesis of radical joy or love as an expression of the toxic or the darker side of love. And be on the lookout for a unified prop that weaves each of their stories together. But I don't want to give too much away. Without further delay, welcome to the screen, Brooklyn Preparatory. She's on fire. Unplugged, which is titled Light as a Feather. Um, we are exploring radical joy and how uh, it involves uh, sleep as a necessity, also love, um, how love can be an act of radical joy, um, and also uh, friendship. Um, so you're going to be experiencing dance, poetry, and also um, a land acknowledgement. So we hope you enjoy. I'd say radical joy means to me, like, I wouldn't say it's just a feeling because it's supposed to be an extreme kind of joy. So maybe I would get a metaphor or something. Like, it's not something, like, it's such an extreme joy that you really can't describe. What made me really want to join Girl Be Heard was the moral of just girls put themselves out there instead of, like, having to call it society and just overall sexism that they may like hear from others that might put them down and not want to like actually apply themselves in the world and just focus entirely on who they want to be and not worry about all these other things that they're told us. This land is made of land from the early core to Crusaders Island, from the Tule River tribe to the Navajo. This land was stolen from our people. This land is stolen land. This land is stolen land from where our buffalo Colonization, don't more than you know. 
convince me that I'm okay, that I'm happy, that I'm fine, that I'm alive. I try to convince myself it never works. It never does. I just can't break myself to love me. I know you probably don't care. You leave me alone. You don't listen to what I have to say. So why do you still stay around? I don't care what makes you stay. I need you too much to, for that. I'm sad. I don't know how to feel better. Please convince me. Convince me. I don't care how you do it. If you lie or if you make empty promises. I can't convince myself to live. Can you convince me? just as pretty as the lake. What are you, in love with me or something? Yeah, I am. Sorry, it's pretty weird, I'll go. No, it's okay, I... You? I feel the same way. Please tell me this isn't some kind of prank. No, it's not, I really do love you. So what does this make us? It makes us people that love each other, whatever that means to you. I think that makes us lovers, then I guess we are lovers. with that. Uh, radical joy is expressed in so many ways in our after school sites, from jamming out in the hallways to Rihanna like you just saw, participating in cupcake decorating challenges, commence to celebrate the commencing of filming of Unplugged, but at the core of this work, creating a brave space where participants are able to express themselves and hold space for each other while unpacking ideas such as environmentalism, racial justice, and systems of power and oppression, and much, much more. Our curriculum in the after school moves from community building and understanding ourselves, our own unique identities, then under understanding the world around us and looking at how power and privilege intersect. So catch these wonderful after school sites and a couple more performances even at the end of year show, Staging the Revolution, where participants will focus on understanding their collective power 
taking the stage with their vision for the future and the change that they can activate with their shared voices. But before I get carried away, Nella, tell us about who's coming on next. Oh, so deep, yes. Yes, we wanna welcome the Urban Assembly students whose faces you will not see, whose voices you will not hear, but whose work is about to be featured anyway. I shared with Marissa going into this that we wanted to hold space and truly honor the journey, recruitment, program start, community building, and art creation and performance preparation. And that journey moves at a different pace for every site. And even still, we wanna welcome and salute their contribution. So Team Urban Assembly, thank you for sharing your original vo your voices and trust. Thank you for sharing your original pieces and trusting us, the GBH team, to carry them in here tonight. So these participants um, took some time exploring ideas about who holds power in their lives and used poetry as the medium to express what they wish they could say to the embodiment of these oppressors, taking back the power. So please give it up for Urban Assembly. My name is Emily and I'm Zara and we're TAs at Urban Assembly. Okay. <laughs> This semester, we've done so many cool things with our ensemble, but one of the things that we did was watch a poem by Denise Froman called Dear Straight People. Oh, Dear Straight People tackles the issues of identity, allyship, and queerness, and really inspired our kids to create their own poetry about these issues. We're so excited for you to see these poems. They're amazing, they're inspiring, um, yeah. We're super excited. We're going to have some of the TAs read them for you, and we hope you super, super enjoy them. Yeah. Dear Bullies, stop talking to me like you own me. Stop making my friends cry. Stop blaming stuff on my friends. They didn't do anything. I don't like the way you hit. Dear racist, stop looking at me as if I'm the odd one out because of my skin color. Stop mocking our culture. Stop thinking we're all the same. Stop mocking our holiday the day of the dead. Stop calling us slurs. Just stop. Dear Christian people, I don't feel myself around you. Dear Christian people, I can't tell you nothing or I'm not going to want to be myself. Dear Christian people, why do you hate me so much? I just want to be outside of the closet. Dear Christian people, I am strong and you can't stop me being myself. Dear Christian people, I am going to love who I love and that is not going to change. Dear rapists, stop raping innocent kids and adults. Nobody deserves to deal with the traumatic experiences. Nobody should be forced to do something they don't want to do. Nobody should feel uncomfortable in their own skin. And nobody should be afraid to love or feel weird when someone touches them. Dear animal abusers, Stop killing innocent animals. They have feelings as well. Stop testing your products on innocent animals. Stop breeding different animals that are not meant to be bred.
Dear white people, do not judge black people off their skin. Not nice. We are like you. We are all the same no matter what. Whatever you are going through, it's okay. We need to come and be one. We could all be one, no matter what. Wow, such a depth and a strength from our youngest after school participants. These poems were literally first drafts, y'all. So I cannot wait to see what this cohort blows away with next time. And a big shout out to all the Girl Be Heard staff who gave a voice to such beautifully written words. We have two asks for you, our audience tonight. First, if you wanna see what after school participants, we can workshop cohorts in all four boroughs or our company members are up to year round, go ahead and check out our website and follow us on socials at Girl Be Heard. We're on YouTube, Instagram, and now even TikTok to uplift the work of these young people and other social justice content creators. Yes, and our second request is to please stick around after the show because we have a brief survey for you about tonight's performance. Your feedback is super, super important to us and it won't take more than five minutes of your time. So please hang out for that. And so we're gonna bring up the next cohort, MS88. Let's hear it, let's hear it, let's hear it. This cohort has been working since late September to devise and write and design their own 10 minute play inspired by prompts about embodying feelings as characters like joy and sadness, like Inside Out. This group has found, found a lot of innovative ways to use the green screen and props to bring their costumes and just their story and their vision to life. So without further ado, please give it up for this piece tonight. Let's hear it for MS88. I'm the teaching artist of MS88, and we have been working so hard together on this amazing show called An Explosion of Feelings. This year, we have been exploring what all of our feelings look like, sound like, and personifying them throughout the year as we have reflected upon everything that they are going through as young people, but also on the world that we currently live in. It's about a person who is getting bullied but overcomes their fear of being bullied. What are some of the main themes of the story? Happiness, like radical joy, sadness, being bullied, um, explosion of feeling, and jealousy. Um, I play jealousy, um, and it basically shows uh, Jude's jealousy towards Stacy. If we could pause the show for one moment, please, just so we can get the technology together. This group is, is, is doing a play. And so their words and their um, voices need to be well synced. So we're just going to give this give comms a brief moment. And so I'm back on just to kind of fill time, but I'm going to take the opportunity to let you all know a little bit more about something that Girl Be Heard has going on. In the spring, we launched our Girls Make Media program. Girls Make Media is a two-pronged program. So on one part of it, we have Girls Make Movies, which we launched actually last year in a pilot. And the other is the What's Good podcast, this, the unofficial name of What's Good podcast. And so we're very, very excited about the 10 participants that we have in the Girls Make Movies program. Um, some of them are local New York City young participants. Others are coming from us, coming to us from various parts of the nation. So it is a national program. It is a program that intends to help support aspiring documentarians use the lens to tell stories and amplify social justice issues. Um, I also want to let you know about the What's Good podcast that's coming up in late May. We're piloting a podcast uh, for five, five participants who are interested in starting their own podcast. Um, so you'll shoot, you'll shoot soon, 
soon to see some promo go out to you all about that program opportunity. So if you know some young folks who are interested in starting their own podcast, we know from the pandemic that became a very, very popular way of communicating and being in, in conversation with people. Um, and I and I would be remiss if I didn't notice uh, Melissa's uh, note here that our B workshops is also launching April 12th. We have a six week series where we've invited six masterclass instructors to come and spend 90 minutes with our participants, really looking at how to use art as a tool to express radical joy and amplify social justice issues. And it's a multi multidisciplinary lineup. I mean, we have folks who are coming in using Afrocentric dance. We have um, a storyteller coming in uh, uh, ready to share how to use uh, storytelling through comedy. We have visual artists and we have musicians. So it's gonna be a really, really exciting time. Um, certainly you'll see some information going out on those socials that Marissa just asked you to sign up for, so don't miss it. Um, so we're very, very excited to, to inform you of those things. Wanna check in very quickly with comms to see if we're, we're good to go. Just give me the thumbs up. We're ready to go. Thank you for the hold. I'm the teaching artist at MS88, and we have been working so hard together on this amazing show called An Explosion of Feelings. This year, we have been exploring what all of our feelings look like, sound like, and personifying them throughout the year as we have reflected upon everything that they are going through as young people, but also on the world that we currently live in. It's about a person who is getting bullied but overcomes their fear of being bullied. What are some of the main themes of the story? Happiness, like radical joy, sadness, being bullied, um, explosion of feeling, and jealousy. Um, I play jealousy, um, and it basically shows uh, Jude's jealousy towards Stacy. I woke up at was seven. I waited till eleven just to figure out that no one would call. I think I got a lot of friends, but I don't hear from them. What's another night all alone? Are you all, Stacy? Wow, you look like you finally found a box of fun in your room and then you purposely stuck out of it. Why are you so mean all the time? You're taking so seriously. I'm only joking. Calm down. Whatever, I don't have time for this. Order, order! We have a very important matter to discuss. Jude's dead. What are we going to do about Stacy? We don't talk about Stacy, no.
now. Ooh, she's gonna get it! No, it'll get better. I don't know. Why even try to change her mind? You hurt my feelings, and that's not okay. I know you're probably going through something right now, but that's not an excuse to be mean to me. You couldn't possibly understand. If you want to be as good as me in the pageants, you can't be friends with anyone. They're all competition. You have to be ruthless. You know what mom says, if you don't win, you lose. You have everything that Duke doesn't. You're so lucky. You just don't get it. How could I? You spend so much time trying to hurt my feelings instead of trying to understand them. Your feelings are not my responsibility. Yeah, but your actions are. You have no idea how lucky you are. You spend your life freely exploring your identity. You're so clueless to that privilege. Me, I'm constantly judged. I live under expectations that tower over freaking Mount Everest. I've spent every day of my life trying to please those around me, hoping that one day I'll be enough. But you know what? I'm never good enough, never smart enough, never pretty enough, enough like my sister. I am never enough. I am really sorry that you're going through that. Do you maybe have someone that you can talk to about that? Okay. Stacy has been stuck in my head, y'all, since Lisi sent oh, me a hey. sneak peek of this. Oh, I've hey. seen it, I mean, months ago. I remember when I knew this song was getting made, and I have been excited to share it with you all since. So good, this, so good. This piece <laughs> brought me back to middle school and how it feels to not be able um, to feel like yourself. Um, I was with these young folks when they were writing, doing some of the writing that inspired these characters. And we spoke a little bit about the lack of agency that students feel, transitioning back from virtual to in-person learning and wanting to see a more equitable future for folks, regardless of their gender expression. I so appreciate the embodiment of emotions like jealousy, optimism, envy, and even doubt that these participants and young people created. At the top of all Girl Beard sessions, we always start in with an opening ritual where participants can check in with how they are feeling, share a high or low of their week, or just taking one minute for a much needed rant about the world. I want to honor that by checking in with how our audience is feeling tonight. Drop in the chat a word, a phrase, um, or an emoji about how you are feeling right now watching this performance tonight. And now tell us about our final piece we got coming our way. Well, before I do that, Marissa, I wanted to respond to your prompt. And I just, I'm just going to say awe-inspired. I mean, this is what three or four unplugs that, uh, that I've had the opportunity to be a part of. And each and every time I'm, I'm blown away by just, just, just the way the participants express themselves and we say it and sometimes we take it lightly but if this is our future our future is bright they are 
stepping into bold territory of leadership and really doing so in a manner that is calling attention to some of these issues that are so, so important. I'm, I'm so inspired and I'm so, so grateful to be a part of, to be a small part of all that's going on here. <laughs> In the chat, we got grateful, impressed, inspired, doing really well. Some heart emojis, superheroes, mind blown, all kinds of love for the work that these young people are doing. Yes, so keep that same energy because we are approaching our final performance of tonight. It's the finale. So get ready to dance, get ready to move. I mentioned at the top of the show that Unplugged, the Unplugged Showcase is an artistic expression of digging into identity, leadership, and radical joy. And so this particular group, the Vogarettes of 380, IS381 as they call themselves, have taken it upon themselves to amplify the voices of a community, the LGBTQ plus community that has long been, that has long experienced the oppression of silenced identities, but these young people will not be silenced. So get ready to see some youth stepping into their power and celebrating identity. The ensemble took inspiration from drag ball culture, which originates here in New York, in Harlem to be exact, and came up with this piece wanting to explore this dance style that really centers black joy. You'll see a few of the, fo uh, the, a few of the elements of Vogue here in this piece, some hands, some catwalks, some drops. So get into it and welcome IS381. I don't play, I play, play. I don't walk, I strut, 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 and then it's that shade. Okay. I don't work for free. No, that's not the key, honey. No, man. Don't make it rain on me. Me. I'm right there, cause you see. What you gonna let them see? My nails, yeah, hips, heels, nails, yeah, hips, heels, nails, yeah, hips, heels. Welcome to MS381. My name is Leah and I'm the teaching artist here. Today we have the Vogarettes and we will be performing the Vogue Revolution. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been meditating on what queerness means to us, how queerness can be expressed, and you know the different modes of queer history like voguing, et cetera. And this is our interpretation of the culmination of everything. And I hope you enjoy our performance. The colors of our costumes represent like the LGBTQ because a lot of people in LGBTQ have not come out to their parents or like to their family. And like a lot of them are in voguing and they love it. So like it inspires them to do what they love to do and come out to their own people. Introducing IS381, the Vogarettes. My name is Tanisha and I love cooking, dancing, and singing. I'm Nevaeh, and I like to bake. Hi, I'm Natalia, and I like to play with my kittens. Hello, I'm Leah, and I like to play trombone. Hello, I'm Olivia, and my passion is art. Hi, I'm Anissa, and I like to dance. Hi, I'm Imani, and I like to dance, sing, and bake. Me and my Vulgarettes will be paying a tribute to Vulgars and people in the LGBTQ plus community whose voices have been silent for too long. This is our revolution and this is how we do it. And that's on period. Do I have your attention? 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 Is you taking notes? Three, two, one.
for the Vogarettes at IS 381. And to all of our cohorts this evening, show them some love, drop it in the chat, show your appreciation. Like I was saying before, for many of them, it was their first time on stage and this encouragement is so, so, so important to them. Um, this cohort came up with the ideas for their costumes, the original choreography, and it was truly a tremendous piece of teamwork and dynamic collaboration rooted in radical joy what a way to end the evening again a final request to you all please stick around to fill out the survey about tonight's performance and that's all i have to say so i'm going to pass it over to marissa who's going to kick us off with some gratitude for the folks that made today possible I would like to give a shout out to each and every participant um, celebrating their work this semester, those that we saw today, those that we will hear from in the future. I personally had the joy of being at each and every one of these filming um, sessions, and I was so humbled to be in the presence of such innovative, passionate, talented, brilliant change makers, leaders, and activists. And we are more than halfway done through our programming year, but there is much more to come. And um, this is just a piece of what you're going to see in Staging the Revolution, our culminating event in early June. And, you know, I can't predict the future, but I hope the audience, artists, and performers can safely be in community together soon to share food, music, and celebrate the work of these astounding participants. I want to make sure we thank our site partners for their work on site with supporting everything from recruitment to enrollment to being there to make sure our teaching artists have everything they need to make this work possible and accessible. Yes, and again, I want to all come back and thank our board, the associate board, our 2021 council members who've made these arts programming uh, possible for us, and those who we look forward to working with in the future. Thank you, GBH staff who held us down tonight. See you on the chats, commenting and supporting. We appreciate you so much. I want to keep thinking about you, our audience, our friends, family tonight. You are the missing piece that has made this performance possible. Thank you for spending our time tonight. And that's all, folks. Keep an eye on that inbox. This spring, we have Weekend Workshop Unplugged and many more performances coming your way. If you haven't yet, come, please complete our survey about tonight's performance. And let's give it up one more time for the incredible work, y'all. Woo! I hope each and all of you have a safe and lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you for being here for Unplugged On Location. Fill out the survey.